The views and opinions expressed on the Chris Davis Show are solely those of the guests. Any claims and representations made in the program are the sole responsibility of the guests. Opinions expressed during the show are educational and informational in nature. These views and opinions expressed do not represent those of the Chris Davis Show, its host, or any network or platform on which the show is featured. Solo travel can be an empowering and life-enriching experience when done properly. On this episode of the Chris David Show, we'll get some valuable tips on traveling safely and cost-effectively, and learn why it's important for Black women and men to book those trips. <laughs> Our next guest is a whole renaissance woman. She's a photographer, she's an interior designer, she's a fitness easta, she's a fashion easta, and just an all around beautiful gal who loves to travel. She has arrived. Welcome, Cozy. Hi. I'm Hi. so happy to have you. Happy spring. Yes, yes. Oh my God, is it really? Wow. It is, it is. So let's jump right in, Cozy. I wanna, I wanna know, how many countries have you traveled to? Um. Hmm. I think I want to say it's been over 30, so maybe like 35. Yeah, 35. Uh, okay, I'm, slacking. I'm slacking big time. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was going to ask you something else, but I'm going to ask you this first. What mm-hmm. do you need to put down on the anxiety when you're flying? What would you say? When you're flying, what do you mm-hmm. need to put down on that anxiety? Hmm. Um... That's really tough because, I mean, right, it's flying. So, like, if you have, like, a natural or just natural nerves just from the act alone, it's quite tough, right? But I think um, what I particularly try to do is meditate, get to the airport at a good amount of time. That's always important to me. Um, because um, sometimes meditation works, sometimes wandering around the airport works, um, sometimes going with um, a family member who has the American Express Lounge works, you know, because um, you can get all your, your willies out at the lounge because it's a lounge, right? So like no matter where you go, depending on what airport it is, um, they the lounge um are usually like decked out and there um there's a good amount of things there for you to kind of indulge in um um either if it's food either if it's like to sleep or anything like that or drinks um there's a good amount of things for you to indulge in so that way you can kind of get the nerves out so usually when I'm traveling it's with a family member and they have um access to American Express Lounge and I usually get out my uh, nervous willies there through meditation, food, or drinking. That's usually how I do it. And coming early is important, too. Yes. Say it again, because Mm -hmm. uh, this this is it. Cozy, I'm going to be blunt. This is a Black Mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. And us Black folks, we tend to have last-minute spirits, as I'll say. (laughs) Very important to be there early. Mm -hmm. Not just you know, because of TSA, but just be there early just to do what Cozy said. Get your willies out. Like, just Mm -hmm. relax and unwind. And also, Mm -hmm. this, if you have, um, you know, one of those those, uh, offers come in the mail for an American Express card and you can get those those points and you can Mm -hmm. uh, access to that lounge, do it. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, like Cozy said, they have drinks there. You can unwind. You can relax. You know, it's Mm -hmm. just something good to have and i think people should have amex yeah. this is not an ad for amex because they're not paying nope nope so, no nope, no nope, no nope. y'all don't need no, to take more of our money but we are just saying that we just saying we just saying and that's, mm-hmm. that's what's your favorite place to visit there um uh saying that i've been there more than once mm-hmm. yes um I haven't been to anywhere. Okay, um, if if it's traveling and it, it doesn't have to be international, so I would say Florida. Okay. Yeah, I would say Florida. I've been there the most amount of times, um, and um, yeah, I would say Florida. I would say South Florida specifically because I've been to Miami, I've been to um, West Palm Beach, and I love it. So yeah, 
I'll say in South Florida. But now what about internationally? Maybe you haven't been there more than once, but it's just a place mm -hmm. that you really, really liked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would say uh, Colombia. Colombia was amazing. Um, specifically, I went to Cartagena. And I've always said that's definitely a country that I could see myself um, visiting more than once, um, living there. Um, 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 I've always said that I've wanted, I've wanted to go back so much to the point where I want to uh, uh, visit and stay there for at least about a week, week or a week and a half. What was it about yeah. Guadalajara that was just so, you know, just you were so taken by it? Yeah, um, you know, most people say like, oh, you know, when you go, like, you know, it's like the people, you know, but um, I, I think it truly really was, in my opinion, like um, going to uh, Colombia in general, right? So like when you go to Cartagena, you see a lot of people from other uh, nearby t cities or towns in um, Cartagena, because Cartagena is like the cap. No, it's not the capital. I think it's Bogota. Yeah. And so um, um, they come to Cartagena because it's like a, a popular city. And so um, in Colombia is the people are very prideful. And so there's a huge, um, there's a stark difference in um, um, the types of people that you see. And um, um, one of the things that um, was so heartwarming was not just the, the the history and the culture and the food but was just the pride of like the people who live in their country and um and the um the pride in their um their culture so like the 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 colombians the the black colombians um it was such a it was such a um, um a heartwarming experience for them for them to see people like me and immediately like reach out to like hug me you know like reach out not not because yeah I mean not because they wanted money but literally with like I had people running down the street and saying like oh my god like in Spanish like you're beautiful like welcome to Cartagena like you're my sister like welcome welcome home like it was such a beautiful experience and that's something that you normally would see in like going back home to Africa because I'm West African and so seeing that um there um it made me like never want to leave you know and um learning I didn't get to learn a lot about the you know you don't get to learn a, a, a many details about the the African culture in Colombia um, you only learn just tidbits based on the African Colombians who are in Cartagena, who are more, mostly like selling um, um, stuff to, to, to tourists they see. But it's like, um, it is like truly such a pride. They take such a pride in, you know, teaching their culture, their African culture to whomever, um, especially to their youth. Um, so that way they never, ever, you know, lose sight of where they've been and the history that's happened to them and how they were separated from Africa. And so, like, that was one of the places I was like, oh, no, like, I'm definitely going back. I'm, I'm, and I could see myself living there for sure. Now, you just mentioned something. You said you're West African. Where, where are you from? Yeah, um, I'm Nigerian. Well, listen, shout out to the whole Nigeria. Mm -hmm. West Africa, the whole mm -hmm. Africa. Yeah. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, they listen and watch because like I can see who's listening. And mm -hmm. from African countries. Um mm -hmm. you're from Harlem though, right? You're a Harlem girl, aren't you? I am. So I Harlem, am stand a Harlem, up. Harlem stand up forever. Yes, yes, yes. I can't, listen, you can't hear it, but I can. We gotta we gotta clap it up for all. Um, yeah. How old were you though when you started going on trips? I was, um, I was 23. Yeah, I was definitely 23 when I first started traveling. Okay. Yeah. Well, locally, do you, do you fly out of LaGuardia or do you do Kennedy? Or you um, do I do a lot. I do JFK. Okay. Um, but if, 
if opportunity, if the if if there's uh, variations in the destination, like if the if the death if the destination is very um um is very has a, a lot of variety where it, it pulls from um um other airports, New York City airports like um LaGuardia, I take that advantage because um to me I think LaGuardia is way better and it's um a lot more organized. Um, and it's also closer to me because I live in Harlem. So um, I take it, I take that advantage. Um, but when it isn't, I'm like, oh God, we got to go through JFK. <laughs> yeah, JFK needs to get it together. I hope somebody is this and they get it together. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So you started traveling at 23, which was what, like last year, easily. <laughs> but um what, so, but I would I would call you a travel pro. I mean, seriously, because you know you've been to thirty five countries. Um, so I can ask you different things pertaining to you know when's the best time to book a flight. Like you just told us, you know the the you know to get that those cards so that you can sit in the lounge. Um, mm -hmm. When is the best time to book a flight? Um, I think it depends really on like preference, right? So like. Um depending on where you go, um, you know, if you're going to um, a Caribbean, um, um, a Latin Caribbean culture, um, it's always best to go, you know, obviously when it's not busy, but lately everybody's been traveling. So my best bet would be to go um, right, right just before it's peak season and um, a little bit right after peak season. So, um, for example, I recently went to Guatemala and though, um, in my opinion, Guatemala is always, is, it's one of those countries that's overlooked. It's not, um, um, you know, it, it, it's not really marketed, um, as I would say it's overlooked for a lot of Americans. Um, um, and I think in general, it's not really marketed a lot because it's just like a small country. And so um, their biggest, they get a, their biggest, a lot, um, a lot of travelers during um, Holy Week or Easter because they, they celebrate um, Easter and Holy Week like, like crazy. And so a lot of people go there because it's like literally a two week um, um, festiv festivity. And so it's either you go like a, I would say four or five days before um, um, Holy Week happens or you come um, four or five days after. Um, and that's really because, you know, um, tickets are normally cheaper, right? Before, like I want to say about five to six days prior to the big event of that town or that country or um, five, six days after um, of that town and that country. Um, and so you, you end up scoring a lot better in hotel prices um, or Airbnb prices or flight prices even because of that. Yeah. Um, another um, tip that I usually tell people to um, the best time to travel to a country is when um, um, when the airline is having um, a promotion promotion. So like ever since yeah, I want to say ever since um, COVID 2021, um, airlines have been a lot more aggressive in the type of um, promotions that they lead. You know, before it used to be just like Southwest having their cute little deals, you know, and, you know, people would follow suit and, you know, book with Southwest every August or June you know, um, or um, June, August, or um, November. And then ever since 2021, JetBlue was like, no, like, you know, since this merge, JetBlue has been very aggressive in, in um, promotional deals since their merge with um, American Airlines. And since their, um, you know, recent acquisition trying to get Spirit, they've been very aggressive with promotional deals. And so, Look, knowing your airline promotional um, calendars are a huge one, especially if you're a member. So I'm a member with JetBlue, so I know a lot about their when they're doing their promotions. Now, when you're at home and mm -hmm. you're on the computer, is mm -hmm. there any time, like, you know, time of day that you think is a good time to start buying those tickets? 
Because some people say you should do it like three in the morning. Other people say do it after dinner time. Like, what do you think? Um, I've always had the best success. I know it changes based on person. Um, but I've personally always had the best best success um um at eight in the morning. Um, always at eight in the morning um on um on Wednesdays, eight in the morning on Wednesdays or on Fridays. Um yeah, or, or Wednesday, Thursdays or Fridays. Um and um, um as soon as I get off work. Um so usually like around seven. Yeah, around six or seven um, in the evening. And that would be around like this Thursday, Friday. And the reason why I say Friday, people get shot, but it is it's because um, a lot of times when you, people rather, um, if you leave, depending on when you leave, if you're looking to leave, but I've, I've found some successful trips when I've booked it on a, um, um, on a Saturday. I've looked on a Friday and I've booked it on a Saturday. And that's because who wants to come in and fly in on a weekend? You know, they'd rather come in a little bit before and get their um, their trip started as opposed to coming in on the weekend. So, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Only if, I tell you, because you're a Virgo, only a Virgo, you, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, I will say something like, here after 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 traveling to um a few countries like I would say after traveling you know um about five countries early in I was like you know what like if this is something I enjoy if I think if you enjoy traveling you you pick you start to pick up you know you start to pick up a lot of a lot of tips and it's like you've always wondered to myself while traveling to the first five countries and like I was like y'all like Europeans are onto something, you know, like I remember, I will never forget this conversation I had on the play, me and my sister had with um, a family and they were like, um, that they travel, they try to at least travel three times a year. And we, and I was like, oh, three times a year, y'all, y'all can afford it, three times a year. And um, my sister was like, girl, <laughs> can you say that? And I was just like, I was, at that time I was young, I was like, oh yeah, I can afford it. And he was laughing at my husband and he was like, well, we can afford it because um, when we we've gotten tips, you know, and to be able to fly with the family and also to be able to um, um, afford flight deals um, and to have all the perks, go with the airline that has the best perks. And after a certain time, you pick up um, um, a lot of good um travel hacks and a lot of good um, perks so that, that way you reap the most benefits especially when you're traveling with kids and I was like oh my god he got a down pack like why aren't we put on to this knowledge as Americans we need to start especially black Americans we need to start picking up on these like knowledge because travel is so affordable it truly is and it should be something um, that shouldn't be gentrified, um, um, you know, to a certain type of pe person or persons, you know, it should be made easily available and affordable to everybody, you know, and um, that's what it's like, in order to do that, you, you got to research and you got to be organized about how you plan your trips. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of what, that's my two cents of what I've learned over time. This is why I have you on. Mm -hmm. and this is why I'm doing this show mm -hmm. because, and, and I've done several shows and, you know, on different topics and it always comes up that we are left out of the conversation. There are things, there are resources out there for all of us, for every person, but we, if you know what I mean by we, get mm -hmm. out of the conversation and that's why I'm doing this. But yeah. talk to us about traveling solo, though. Give us, like, some do's and don'ts about traveling solo. Um, I would definitely, um, um, whenever, I've only traveled solo um, internationally once. Um, but um, even when I did it, um, I was young when I did it, but I, I did it for a day. It was a day trip. And, um, and it was fine. Like, I made sure I didn't, 
you know, freak out my sister because we had traveled together to Barcelona and then um, or, um, and then I took a, a detour and went to Milan in Italy and then I came back. It was a little day trip, but it definitely um, um, based on the amount of time that you're traveling to any country, I would definitely say don't um, obviously don't stand out. That's a big thing. And standing out means like don't wear a lot of flashy jewelry. Like you will definitely want to um, try your best to appear like a local, you know, so, you know, researching what are the social norms about dress code in that particular country is important. That's uh, that's what I do, um, especially if you're going to be going to the important monuments. Um, if you need to be if you need to if you need to wear a dress dress at a certain length or not wear shorts, I know most um, um, Hispanic or Latin American countries, then when you step into a holy place, they tell you your shoulders have to be covered. You know, um, you can't wear certain things like shorts. You probably can't wear um, for the most part. And so researching the social norms about what is allowed and what isn't when it comes to dress code is really important. That's a big doozy for me. Um, another one is, um, 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 is joining, um, um, reg registering with the U.S. Embassy. So wherever you're staying, um, that's a big one to register with the U.S. Embassy. They have a STEP program and the STEP program is now, it's like all digital now. So um, if any questions, numbers, contacts, um, or emergency call, um, if you're an American citizen, you join the STEP program, 911 is, becomes your international um, um, alert number. So just like how it's um, used in um, America, um, it, because you join the U.S. Embassy, it's still um, used for the same reason um, um, anywhere you are in the world, so, um, as long as you're registered with a U, um, U.S. Embassy there. Um, and then they have, they pretty much um, will contact anyone immediately from back home for you. Always print multiple copies of your password. That's a huge one. Um, you know, and wherever you stay, make sure that you um, um, obviously have a um, safe, de um, safe deposit box, you know, that way you can lock up your personal items. Um, uh, this is new for me. Um, never, never put all your cash in one place. So um, I I've, I've just recently realized that's a new one for me because, um, um, you know, most people are cash when we went to Guatemala, um, most places didn't use cards. Um, and so I had to, I found myself having to take out cash and I didn't, I felt uncomfortable about having all my cash in one place. So I, I've, I started separating it around my body. So some of my cash was in my pocket and others were in other areas. So um, not putting all of your cash in your wallet and putting in other places around your body is important because if you do get robbed, you don't want to have all your cash in one place. Um, and on your and listen, if you're from the hood like I am, you know better. You are yeah, there. yeah, totally right. You act like you got, like, act like you got some sense. You Just know, saying. right? <laughs> go, go on, um, I'm sorry, I had a moment. Go on. No, 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 it's okay. Um, um, yeah. So that's another one that's huge. Um. Um, it would be, I would say, if it would behoove of you to, if you're born in a country that they, you know, English is not the first language, you know, you pick up um, obviously some important um, language um, um, key terms, keywords to help you, or you get a, you hire a personal guard. Um, I think that's a huge one because it's like, if you don't speak the language, you should, you should definitely have a tour guide and make sure that the tour guide is approved by the U.S. Embassy. Um, or the federal government, their federal government um, for um, credentials. And um, um, what's another big tip? I would say, um, hmm. Hmm. oh yeah, if you're traveling solo, I would say um, um, don't um, be careful about Ubers just because, um, you know, get proper confirmation that the car that you're entering is an Uber. That's a big one. Um, always identify if it is or isn't, um, if, if they have Uber. 
um, if, if it's regularly used among tourists. Um, um, and if so, obviously double check your Uber and don't stay out lo too late, um, at, late at night. Um, just because, you know, like you always, you always use your sense of awareness, right? So if you're not going to stay late at night in your home country, um, by yourself, then why would you do it in an international country? So, um, that's another big one for me. So probably not to stay out too, too late if you're alone, um, after I, at night. Um, so yeah, those are the ones that I could think of. And I'm going to put up some websites um, mm -hmm. so that people can use, um, you know, to register with, with the, uh, the, the Department of State. Is it the Department of State or, or no? Oh, the U.S. Embassy. U.S. Embassy. U.S. Mm -hmm. Embassy. Uh, mm -hmm. They have the STEP program. It's the what program? Sorry. STEP. STEP program. I'm also going to put up um, some websites, too, for, like, dress code, you know, so you know, identify what the dress code is in different countries. Um, but now, now see, here's why I get a little messy. Uh, <laughs> we see this all the time on social media, like every day. And, and you, you, okay, I guess you, I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but what would you say to a woman out there who really wants to book a trip, but she's waiting for her friends? Hmm. <laughs> And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. I've been in that predicament before. So I would just say, just book it, sis. Book it, book it, book it. Do you. Don't, don't, uh, don't be so concerned about waiting on them. You know, unless, unless, you know, um, you're waiting on them because you guys have made a promise to yourselves when you guys are younger, you know, a couple of years back that this is where you guys are always going to go. If it's not like a, a, um, a, that type of situation, just book it, book it, you know, like, cause I've been that person, um, 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 waiting on a friend and I was like, you know what, I'm just doing do me, but it was like a domestic trip, you know? So that was okay. It wasn't an international. Um, well, but yeah. You guys heard what she said. You heard what she said. Book it. Just do it. Yeah. And the other thing is, too, I'll say this. You know if you're hanging with people or you're associated with people who just don't have that spirit to go through with putting down the deposits and yeah, yeah, actually yeah. booking the flight. You, you got friends like that. Yeah. So you got yeah. friends like that. Don't go on a trip with them. Both of, yeah. them, both of your club friends, y or y'all go out to Wendy's or something. I don't know. <laughs> those are not the friends that you need to be trying to book a trip with. I mean, seriously, like you know better. Like you know better. But you just put something up, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you did because I was just about to get into it. Mm -hmm. the other thing we see on social media is people, um, you know, shaming other people for wanting to do domestic trips. But I mean, mm. it's a lot of fun, you know, doing stuff locally in the U.S. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this a lot. So tell us, give us, give us some stuff like, you know, tell us about that. Yeah, I learned this a lot during the pandemic, just going to Miami. You know, I privileged enough to where, like, my family has a family home in Miami. So, like, um, you know, when I, you know, wanted to invite my friend, they were like, oh, I don't know at the time. And I was like, okay. And, you know, it was like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, no, it's okay. I'm going to go, you know, going by myself and, uh, you know, taking that time to just enjoy um, just being away um, and during the pandemic in Miami. And um, it was, when I tell you I had a time of my life by myself, I was like, wow. And I really was sitting here thinking that I should have been better somebody else I'm like, of course it would have been fun with the per another person but I had a blast by myself and it became you know like a mini retreat for me you know kind of doing my own thing and I met so many great people by myself as well too you know just kind of going out and about by myself found a new workout buddy you know I went to um um, um local soccer matches like it, I, I I going places by yourself sis going places by yourself domestically 
um, allows you to be a lot more, not to say that you're not aware when you're with um, others, but I think you're just hyper aware, right? Like what well, you should be, like you're more hyper aware. And um, you're also more inclined to um, have more authentic connections with people because you want to network, you want to be social. Um, and so your connections are just a lot more authentic, right? Because when you go with the group, you tend to stick more with the group. You know, so, um, yeah, and your sense of, you're also, like, your sense of awareness in people um, is a lot more sharp, right? You knowing who, who um, you know, knowing, oh, this person, I get good vibes from this person. Um, oh, yeah, you know, to them telling you information that is, um, 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 that is inviting, right? Like, oh, you should check this place out, giving you a lot of details, like, um, yeah, like you get a lot of those authentic experiences when you come out of your shell and when you're, you know, um, not focused on being so much close knit with the group, but just kind of wanting to go outside your comfort zone. So, yeah. Now, you just got back from Guatemala. We, um, we want to know about that. Tell us about Guatemala. Yeah, um, Guatemala was amazing. Like I, if it wasn't Colombia that I could see myself with living there it would be Guatemala would be the second one like it really stole my heart because um it reminds me so much of Nigeria um just seeing you know they obviously also struggle with having a government that is supportive and not corrupt you know um so there's a lot of political uh you know, a lot of political um, interruptions that go on into not giving the people what they deserve as far as basic um, human necessities. So that was like, obviously like um, connected me to, to the there, um, to the people, um, how kind they were and so accepting of you, you know, no matter if like they could, they, <laughs> I'm laughing because, um, um, you know, they weren't used to seeing Black people, you know, and learning the history about Guatemala was also another big one for me because Guatemala was a country that was the safe haven for Black slaves, for um, Panamanian and Honduran Black slaves. So it, it wasn't necessarily that they weren't used to, they, it, it wasn't that they didn't like seeing Black people. It just wasn't that they hadn't seen Black people in a while. And if they did see them, it was more so they're used to seeing refugees and they're used to accepting and being open arms to African refugees. So um, they didn't treat me any different at all. Like I got more, I got more, um, you know, weird looks from Europeans, white Europeans, white Americans there than I did from Guatemalans. And uh, if anything, Guatemalans looked at me if they didn't look at me weird, it was more in awe because I, you know, um, they are, a lot of them are short. And so I'm short too, but I, not only am I short, but I'm athletic. So I think they were not used to seeing a woman with like an athletic build. So, whereas when I was, when I was traveling with my sister, then they weren't used to seeing a tall woman. So they were like, I'm looking up at you. How is that possible? I, I'm, this is a black woman. I'm looking up at a black woman. You know, so like um, that was like funny, funny. A lot of us is about to be looking up at a black woman. I'm just saying. <laughs> right, right, right. Y'all right. better go fall, alive, fall alive, fall alive, fall alive. That's it. That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you just brought something up, and, and, and I, I gotta say this: it's it's mm. so funny that you say. Not even funny. It's just you know, it's interesting that you say the white people were giving you looks over mm. there. Giving yeah. you looks in a country that they're not even from. Yeah. That just always yes. blows my mind. That, that, that yeah. always blows my mind. But what did your mother say, though, Cozy? The first time you told her you were going to go on a trip by yourself, what did she say? Yeah, she didn't even know um, that I was going on a solo trip at the time. She found out after the fact. Um, but when she found out, I, I, she found out. So when I went to Milan when I was younger, she didn't know till after the fact. But when she found out I was going to on a trip to um, Bar Barcelona with my sister and my, at that time, he wasn't my brother-in-law, but um, my sister's boyfriend, she was like, you mean you're going, you're, you're traveling out the country? I was like, 
am from other country and like you know trying to see what's out there you know what's out there that you can't find here and I'm like now what are you saying <laughs> now what are you saying ma'am ma'am Crazy. now what are you saying is you really saying you're gonna miss me <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Well, how is she now, though, with you traveling and everything? She's good now. Yeah, no, totally. She's good. Um, you know, every, you know, everybody took a pause during the pandemic. So now that I've started up again, she's like, like you know, it's funny. We have this trip to Guatemala. She said, "Hey, y'all go to Guatemala. Hey, y'all going to a corrupt land? It's like Nigeria." I said, "Okay. You, you think that's gonna make me scared?" I'm not scared. I said, I said, first of all, Nigeria is the trenches. It's even worse. Come on, let's be real now. Like that's the trenches. I think I'll be way more comfortable traveling Guatemala around those, around uh, people who are from our culture, you know? So um, she was like, I don't know. Just make sure you carry a rosary. I was like, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I'll be fine. <laughs> y'all heard what Mama Mbalo said, make sure y'all carry your rosaries. She said, like, Mama. I tell you, we all connected because I'm not, I'm not, you know, um, Nigerian. But that's my mother. With yeah. the rose. Other than a rosary, Cozy, mm -hmm. what are some of your travel must haves? Um, hmm. Travel must haves, I would definitely say um, cleaning supplies. I'm definitely like somebody who likes to clean. Um, <laughs> Like if you saw the amount of cleaning supplies that I brought to uh, this trip was, it was hilarious. Like we had the micro band, we could have had a whole commercial in the hotel because we had a micro band, we had, um, we had gloves, latex gloves. I had, we had uh, multiple masks, multiple surgical masks, a multiple N95 masks, multiple uh, uh, fashion masks with the dupes on it. <laughs> We had um, um, hand wipes, sanitizer, um, 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 hand sanitizer. Um, we had medication, and um, and I'm lucky and I'm privileged, right? Because my sister's a nurse, so um, she's on to you know most most times people forget to bring medication during trips, you know. And if you're somebody who has um, you know a sensitive stomach. You know, you might forget to bring um, 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 gastrointestinal intestinal, um, medication. And I think that's huge. You know, um, um, bring in Tylenol, Advil, Motrin. If you're about to get your menstrual during that time, it's a huge, huge one. If you know that, you know, you're, you tend to have really bad um, um, cramps during the time of the month. That, that's a huge one to bring. Um, you know, feminine products. Um, you know, definitely don't leave without, yeah, definitely any type of medication, bring it, bring it if you can, you know, um, um, what's another one? Uh, oh, a collapsible, collapsible water bottle. Um, that's huge. If you're going to, um, a place, um, that, um, has fresh water, I haven't been to, um, places that have fresh water, but I know that, um, you could just bring a regular water bottle, but if it's too heavy, you could just bring a collapsible water bottle that helps too, or just, you know, take a regular water bottle from uh, that you, you um, most places, hotels, they offer free water bottles. Um, so that's another one. Um, try to get a SIM card, two phones. If you can have two phones, one that is your standard phone from America and the other one that is um, a chip you know, that you buy data, a local data, and just like a couple minutes per day that gives you international, or oh, no, the country's um, data plan, which is normally inexpensive anyway. Like the trip is cheap and also the plan for the data is really cheap. Um, otherwise, depending on who your carrier is, your mobile carrier, get data on your phone and you should always have it as a safekeeping, right? Because we live in a modern day world and you should always have your phone accessible with you, but you it would be wise to have two phones. Um, yeah, I think that's all I can, uh, think about my selfie stick. You know, I love bringing a selfie stick with me oh, everywhere course. I go. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, you guys are going to see Cozy's, um, Instagram, of course. <laughs> I mean, there's like selfie stick photos. And <laughs> yes. 
So yeah, yeah that's totally. Very um, totally. What would you tell someone who keeps mm -hmm. procrastinating getting their passport? Um, you ain't never gonna live the um, leave the block. You ain't never gonna leave the block. Keep procrastinating. Stop said. procrastinating. Okay, I need you to get up and go hand it out. Okay. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, um, traveling has so many rewards and benefits. Like the amount of benefits that it has is unlimited. Um, you find your future husband, future wife, you know, listen, you miss it now. The longer you wait and keep talking about, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. You, you, you might be missing out on your, your um, having a whole love life for love. So, um, yeah, you know, do it. It has so many benefits. You, you, it, you're not losing out, you're gaining um, by getting that, being one step closer to getting your passport. Which leads me into my next question. Mm -hmm. What's one of the most important lessons you've learned while traveling? Um, ooh. Um, well, see, I'm a journalist. I'm telling you, I, I, I ask the hard hitting questions. <laughs> I love it. It's good, it's good. I love that. You said these are really good questions. Um, um, I would say the most important lesson would be um, um, just to be, yeah, just to be self-aware at all times, right? Like um, self-aware at all times, um, be prepared. Um, I know you can only prepare for so much, but try, um, you know, this is, I think there's like a saying that um, do, in, um, um, do the thing that takes, um, do the do hardest the thing, that, thing first. Do the hardest thing first. Yeah, do the hardest thing first because your your uh, future use if the future you's gonna be thankful that you did it. Yeah, um, yeah. So do the do be prepared in that aspect. You know, um, and ask questions. Um, be resourceful. Definitely be resourceful. Ask questions, um, and just be aware. Have your sense of awareness should always um, expand the more you travel and you should allow yourself to um, let it. Lizzie, give, give us all a good trip, for, a good first trip for someone mm. traveling solo. Um, yeah, okay. So definitely, um, yeah, I would say recommend my, my recent trip, Guatemala. Um, and it's because Guatemala, in my opinion, is what Mexico used to be uh, before Mexico got to um, popularized by um, by people, by certain types of people. Um, by the spring breakers. Yes, yes, by exactly. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. It, it, it used to be like that. It used to be people would travel to Mexico and it was extremely inexpensive. Um, every city was extremely inexpensive and now it's not like that anymore. And so the Guatemala is overlooked and you get, um, um, you get extreme, um, uh, your dollar, American dollar stretches you sh extremely far, extremely far. Um, we stayed for about a week in Guatemala and worse, we were in Guatemala City and then we were in Antigua, Guatemala and um, um, the accommodations for hotel was not in was not um, expensive and the amount of money we spent on food was not an ex was not um, expensive either. So um, go to a place that it stretches you far that you um, as a solo trip that you don't feel like you need to break the bank for. Um, so I would definitely say go to go to Guatemala. you get the you get the views of the Caribbean um, you know there, you get the hiking there, you get, the adventure there, you get the re relaxation there because they got um, um, bath spas and everything like that as well too. Um, every type of need that you would want um, when traveling, whether it, like uh, those types of things, adventure or relaxation, they have it there. And the best part is you don't have to break the bank by going, so That's yeah. Amazing. Now yeah. recommend one for a couple, say like a romantic couple or maybe even friends or two mm -hmm. friends. Yeah, um, um, I would say um, a romantic couple, I would probably say, um, uh, hmm. um, I think uh, if they, a romantic couple, I would probably say um, France. Um, 
probably not Paris. <laughs> you know, Paris is just like overwhelmed. I would probably say like um, go to the countryside of France, um, you know, explore places like the south of France is huge. You know, um, it, it often gets overlooked and you still get those benefits of uh, the Parisian lifestyle, especially if you go to like Lyon or um, if you go to uh, Marseille, um, you get those amazing um, perks. You can go um, to Palma de Mallorca. That's a very romantic place to go to. Um, Mallorca, Spain um, is a really good couple's place to visit. So you definitely could do that as a couple or even or as a family as well. Nice. Now what about mm -hmm. for groups? What about like a group trip? What do you recommend? A group trip? Um, I definitely say a group trip that I really love. A girls group trip was uh was Colombia. That was like we were all litty. We were all litty for a girl a girls group trip. But Colombia, Cartagena, that was great. Um um, I know right now a girls group trip that buzz that's really buzzing right now. I haven't been yet, but I would love to go for a girls group trip is um, Brazil. Um, that is like apparently where a lot of people are traveling right now for girls trips. So that I, I think I might have to call on the, the baddies. I might have to uh, put the 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 call call symbol out and tell the baddies to to fly that we need a round up um, to to go to Brazil. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Now, and, and also, everybody, you know, there, there are lots of travel groups that you can join. I mean, I know there's one I like, Black and Abroad. Um, there's also Black Girl tra uh, Travel Slay. Oh, um, totally. What, what are some other ones, Cozy? Yeah, um, there's Black Passport Stamps, um, Black Voyagers is another one. Travel Noir is big. Everybody knows, they, they, everybody knows Travel Noir. I think they're the most successful one. Um, Black Melanin Feed is another big one. Um, yeah, um, you could even, you could even, now Instagram has it to where you can type in keywords um, to find um, the social group that you want to identify with um, based on that following. So I just type in then the keyword of Black Travel alone brings you um, a whole bunch of like um, new, um, groups that have just joined recently within the past two years alone um, on um, Black travel. So, and see, you know, you can see social media isn't all bad. Use it to your advantage. No, yeah, no, totally. I've grown, honestly, to um, spend more time talking about the benefits of social media. Um, there are obviously a lot of unhealthy benefits, but like my mom has always said, too much of everything is not good. And I think that's and that applies with everything in life, right? So um, I'm not going to say that social media is what's wrong with the world, because obviously there's a lot of good things it has benefits in, but yeah. Well, so I, I love the show. When I have you back on, we'll talk about <laughs> a whole different show. Um, yeah. But what's the wildest thing you've seen on one of your trips? Oh my God. Um... Oh my God, yes. I was traveling with a group one time when I was younger and we went to Madrid. It was actually a, a, a Christian a Christian group <laughs> um, from my church. We went to Madrid and there was a lady's bag that was stolen right in front of me. And one of my buddies was like, I'm going to help her get it. I'm like, are you are you nuts? Dude, we're out of, out of country. <laughs> Dude. Don't do that. And immediately he went into like fight, fight or flight mode and like ran after this guy. Mind you, I mean, like my, my friend Michael, he's like um, six feet five and he's a hefty dude. Like he's a he's fat, he's a fast dude with like a, like a, a big build. So he caught up to him extremely quick and like tackled him down like he was a linebacker. So, but it was just like, what are you doing? We're not like, don't do that. But the lady, you know, was, the lady was. You. That, that's you. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to Michael for getting that lady's bag back. But you, when you're young, you do stuff like that. That's yeah, fearless. Oh fearless. my God, I'm in another country. These people can have weapons. I need to like not do that. You know? Yeah, totally. Totally. And it's, it's you know, it's, listen, it's a material. She, her life is okay. Her life is still intact. But you know, um, I was, I, I, he was lit. I was like, wow, like that was impressive. And I was, that was wild to me that seeing that happen right in front of me, like seeing like somebody's stuff getting stolen. So, 
Yeah. But I was like, not today. He was like, not today. It didn't get stolen today. <laughs> again, he, he, got, he was he was covered in the blood of Jesus, I guess. Yeah, he had his rosary. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are some countries though that had like really just bomb, just amazing food? Oh, oh, um, amazing food would definitely uh, Barcelona. Barcelona um, had amazing food, mind blowing food, um, and. Um, another one was um, uh, Colombia had mind blowing food that was just amazing. Um, Guatemala <laughs> cheap food but it's like it was good, like hearty and like inexpensive food. But as far as like cuisine still, like um, like uh, Barça Barcelona had like the best. I was just like whoa, like I couldn't stop eating. I ask all my guests this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not putting you on the spot. But if you had a time machine, Cozy, what would you go back and tell yourself in the past? Mm, if I had a time machine, I would have went back to 2015 and I would have told myself, girl, start that blog. <laughs> start that travel blog ASAP and, um, you know, um, start that travel page or like our online travel page account on Instagram or start the um, um, YouTube blog. Um, and just to just enjoy doing it, not doing it because like you needed to do it, but just in do it because you wanna see how far you've come and just enjoy doing it and recording yourself. And um, so that would be what I would tell myself to do because I spent so many time talking myself out of it. Oh, it's not, I'm so particular about this and that. And I mean, now I record in my own way. Um, I record my trips in my own way, but um, as far as like a full like experience, immersive experience, like um, I would have told myself to do that. And that's the thing you have to get out of, because I think with even with this, I'm particular and very picky. And once I got out of that, I was able to just do it, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I'm not going to put myself out there and, and, you know, not look the way I want to look, but right, right. I just had to just do it. You know, it's yeah. just one of those things you just have to just go at it and, and just do it. And yeah. Everything else will fall in place, you know. Definitely. You're um, right. You're but right. now, let I want you to let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I mean, wait a minute. Do you want them to get in touch with you? Because we have to protect you. We can't have you just have anybody. <laughs> Hitting book. <laughs> um, say. Yeah, um, they can hit me up on um, social on Instagram. It's cozy, C O Z I E um, eleven, cozy eleven, um, C O Z I E no space eleven. Right, yeah, so they can hit me up on there. Everybody that C is in Cozumel, O is in Uranistat, Z is in Zurich, I is in Istanbul, E is in East New York. The number 11 mm -hmm. on and might I suggest you don't mess with my sis <laughs> okay listen let them know all right let them know let them know <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with me and mama we got nations we got nations um, but listen mama umbama <laughs> mama umbama did I say that? Umbamalu. What is that? Say, say it again. Ooh, umbamalu. That's it. Mm, mm, like, mm, good. Oh, umbamalu. Mm, Easy. Why was I doing all the extra? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a stupid Americans. I tell you. No, that. no, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. But it's listen, y'all okay. better replay this because Cozy gave everybody good information. Like, this this was really, really good. This was insightful. I learned a lot. Thank you. And, Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. Anytime. And listen, you'll have to come back because I know you're going to go on more trips. You're going to have more tips. And yeah. we'll talk about other stuff, too. But it's Mbamalu. Yes, yes, yes. You got it. Listen, you got it. You got it. I'll tell you, I'm a fast learner. Um, but if you know a phenomenal woman like Cozy, who you'd like to see featured on an upcoming episode yeah. of The Chris David Show, you know, let us know slide into them dms again if you go on cozy's dms be respectful that's yeah. what i'm saying 
And I want to yes. thank everybody for listening and watching. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, <laughs> tell, your dad, tell, your girl, tell your doctor. Listen, tell everybody in Guatemala. So mm-hmm. follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at The Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find links to all the great things I just mentioned. And that's Chris with the C, no H. And listen, y'all be well and flew out yourself. Don't yes. wait for somebody else to flew you out. Flew out yourself. Yes. And yes. Yours. All right. So I know you got to go. I don't want you to be shit. <laughs> <laughs>